Alrighty, let's go. Hey guys, welcome to Away From Gaming. I'm Dylan. I'm Sebastian. And I'm Chris. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, we have an exciting podcast for you today, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're just going to kind of introduce ourselves as well as we're playing a brand new game, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. And, brand uh, new game. This, this game came out two weeks, comes okay. out two weeks from now. <laughs> we're in the future. <laughs> it's two weeks later. So yeah, we're just going to start up a game in the background. Uh, don't really need to pay attention to it. And yeah, so we'll just be talking. Yeah. All while you're checking out how the game is. <laughs> Yeah, like because it is it is a beautiful game. To, yeah, you're still trying to figure out see the update how did, the game is. Yeah. It looks like the update today came out and it fixed the frame loss. Yeah, I noticed when I first got the game, played it on the uh, Tuesday that it came out. Uh, this opening credit scene was Lagging choppy, was brutal, choppy and laggy. It looks so glorious now. Yeah, and I think they also addressed the uh, there was an issue with their save uh, on the Xbox One, which is what we're playing on. Um, I noticed while I was playing through my account earlier that I was trying to manually save from the uh, pause menu, mm-hmm. and it it simply said you cannot do this right now. Yeah, and it actually said that for me when we tried to end it the first time too. So. So I noticed that Ooh, there was um there was some reports going on, and CD Projekt Red was looking into it. So looks like looks they, like they fixed it. Yeah. So good on them that they isolated it, it so quickly too. Yeah, isolated the incident so quickly. Um. Now, let's just do a quick, like, icebreaker question, if anything, uh, see where our minds are at when we talk about games and, like, what our background kind of is within playing video games, because we're just people who love video games. We're not <laughs> professionals by any means. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Speak, yeah. <laughs> Mr. 85,000 gamer score here. I think it's, it's, like, 86 at this point. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, God. Make, no. sure, <laughs> one, make hey. sure you hit it right on the dot. <laughs> Um, I just want to know. And I'm here seven years later with 20. 20 <laughs> game score. You, you don't even have the Xbox hey. One yet. Okay. <laughs> nice. Nice of you. Just, see, I was right. It was 85,000. Yeah, it was 84. I should have said 84. <laughs> um, just my, I guess the question that we can pose is, what are your favorite games growing up? Like, let's bring in some nostalgia, see if we can hit our stride with different um, age levels pretty much, right? Right. So, favorite game growing up, growing up for me, would mean my the game that kind of pulled me into gaming. I'm going to have to say Counter-Strike 1.6. Oh, that was the five. game that I well, clocked. Like... I, I probably started playing that in like grade 6, so uh, I don't know, 2000 and... Something uh, That's... Four? Four, four. Yeah. 2004. So that's when I probably started like playing it. Like I had the game for a while at that point, but... Um, yeah. I, I think that's when it like really resonated with me, and I started playing like Cal, CPL, and Cyber Athletic leads and all that. Right. So yeah. And that, how was that? Like that was obviously that was on, incredible. Oh online. my god! But that like, was like that my was like first, early online game. That was too. my first online experience, as well as my first uh, mature game. I would think yeah. that my parents really had no control over because it was on the PC, as well as uh, like I invested in the game. Like I bought a headset and all that good stuff because it improved how you would play the game. Yeah. Like a lot of people say like Turtle Beach is the way to play Call of Duty. I actually think with Counter-Strike, having a headset was a, a gigantic advantage. Like having, I had the Turtle Beaches for the Xbox as well, but like the level of acuity that a headset gives you in Counter-Strike is just above and beyond. Right. Um, and that's like, <laughs> I was I was thinking back to grade six and what I was playing. I was like, I think that's when I first got introduced to RuneScape, and then that took over my life for the, for the next, like, two, three years. Yeah. I started uh, playing RuneScape in grade 7. Was yeah. GameCube out by then? Oh, yeah. Uh, GameCube well, came out yeah. in, like, 01. Yeah. Well, Xbox One was 01, so yeah. So around, around that there. time, right? PlayStation was, 2 was, was later than... 99? What? PlayStation 2? PlayStation 2? 2? Uh, uh, yeah, something like that. 2000, yeah. even. I just know Xbox been. One. The turn of the century. Like, I can't even call it the Xbox One anymore. Original Xbox. Xbox. The OG? Xbox original. Was uh, 2001, because that's when Halo 1 came out. Wow. <laughs> Combat evolved. Jesus. For yeah, me. this is uh, some pretty oh, risque that's... material. Oh, yeah, oh. totally. I also like that he like smiles and then questions oh. it. Wait a minute. That's not supposed to be there. Yeah. It's like, that went up a little too strong. Too quickly. <laughs> um, Gaming per- was not like this before. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow, look at those graphics. Look at those feet. <laughs> For what would you say? Yeah. For me, well, 
I would have to say I grew up with Zelda. He has. Granted, I didn't start with like the uh, the very original. Is Zelda the, the main character with the sword? The elf looking guy? Yes, like, yes. Wow. Zelda, the hey. one that's wearing green. Okay. Cool. <laughs> hey, hey. No. Oh. Uh, but yeah, ah, the Zelda game, the Zelda series was probably what got me into everything, but I didn't start playing uh, on the original ones. For me, uh, Zelda really took off. I know it sounds weird, but with Wind Waker, that's mm. when I really got into the series, and from there I've been buying everything. But even before that, like I would go to a friend's house and, and yeah. try it out, and well, it was so fun. There was, Le- there was Legends of Ze- Legend of Zelda on uh, Super Nintendo. Yeah, exactly. And a lot uh, of the uh, so I I played those at friends' that. houses, but like when I finally got my very first TV console was the GameCube, and from there it's just I bought Windows. Really, Baker. you didn't have anything like I didn't Super have Nintendo, anything Nintendo before that. Ever. Okay, fair enough. And before that, the only like real handhelds that I've had were the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance. I think came out. Game Boy Color came out around the same time the GameCube. Why does he keep doing that? The first time I was able to give everyone a nice view. My question is, why did you try to do that again? (laughs) Just go through it. Um, He's like, ah, you don't learn once, you learn twice. It's true. (laughs) Three times. (laughs) It's shame on me. Yeah, yeah. Shame on you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know the Game Boy Color. I think came out like ninety eight, ninety nine, because I remember receiving one for Christmas. Yeah, there was a Game Boy Color bundle with Pokemon Red and Yellow. Okay. Or Pokemon uh, Red and Blue, and I oh, got the I Red remember. version. Oh my I god! I think I that got, was one of my favorite. I think I like think I got Yellow as my first. I think that was my favorite Christmas present ever. Yeah. That, as a kid, can you just imagine something like Pokemon yeah. coming out for the first time ever in the especially when every, Pokemon was so big then. right because you obviously you had the cards and then you get the and game and the TV show oh my god yeah so you're like oh my god and then all of a sudden for the kids I mean the even nowadays like you're, I'm still excited when, when they announce Pokemon uh, I, I did I bought myself a Omega Ruby or I think my girlfriend got it for my for Christmas <laughs> you um, don't even remember <laughs> let's just say I, I got it you got it somehow <laughs> thank you to the person who got it either me or either her um, but uh, it, it, I, I granted I'm not playing it as much uh, but it is still a fun game like I'm you have it you you enjoy having it yeah exactly and I, I'll still keep buying them just because I like that kind of RPG yeah, right turn based yeah. um, which leads to my I guess like my favorite game which would probably be I mean I have a few I have a lot of favorite series um, but I think one of the the most memorable games that I've had and I put so many hours into it at the time not, not RuneScape <laughs> although like fucking, I, I, I'm about to say like at the time I loved RuneScape right like at the time when I played it mm-hmm. a bunch it was my favorite game yeah right it, it just had me enthralled and I was hypnotized by it and even though like there's better MMOs out there like I, for some reason, I never wow. played War, World of Warcraft, right? I just never got into that. I, I went straight into RuneScape. Yep. And my cousin introduced it to me. And then I think I, I dabbled in a game called Silk Road, which is like Guild Wars, but for free. That, it, it was interesting, too. But my favorite game, I think, growing up on PlayStation 2 was Final Fantasy X. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly why it's sticking out, but the remaster came out on PS3. Uh, a few years back, and actually, I think recently too, they Square Enix apparently released two re- remasters: one for the PS3 when before the PS4 existed, and now one, one for the PS4, but it's still PS3 as well. I don't know how that works, but replaying Final Fantasy X in HD on the PS3, I easily over 100 hours as well put into it. I'm into getting all the secret weapons, the Ultima weapons, and the story itself for me. Like, I could see that story in that game ter- be turned into, like, a trilogy of movies. Just because, yeah. I don't know. Just it's, the way business Yeah, it's, it's like days. you're you're gathering on a quest. Right, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they don't make more games into movies. They always turn movies and put make a game, like well, Mad Max. I, can I think they're starting to move away from that. Because yeah. they're finally realizing how terrible that is. Well, Tomb Raider, right? Yeah, but... <laughs> Well, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, what else was there? That's a movie into a game, though, right? 
didn't. Sorry, other way, other way around. Game around. Game oh yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what my we're bad. talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but even like that was so long ago. Like that's that's a very long, um, like, and Mortal Kombat. I think also got a movie. Yeah, but it was a game first, right? And those were it amazing. was a game first, obviously. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is that <laughs> oh, yeah. there were so many failed attempts that they decide that the industry and now they're decided. doing movies into games, and they realize there's been failed attempts with movies into games. <laughs> Think of all the Spider-Man games, every single and, uh, yeah. Transformers, so many like blockbuster hits that they're like, we're gonna make a game that sort of resembles the movie, but then we're gonna change it up a bit, and and all of a sudden you're like, what's the point of the game? Yep. It's not a clear representation of the movie, but it's not trying to be something different at the same time. If you want to make it something different, like the Batman Arkham series, yeah. it's not fall. It did, they came out around the same time as the Dark Knight trilogy, but you know, it, it's not like we're not trying to be the Dark Knight trilogy. We're we're standalone games, not and really they've done movies. really well. We're just and using great. the, the they've name. done extremely the name, well. Right, they're on the fourth one now. So. I mean, they did and make apparently a f- it's really good. Like I've never played any. I've of played the, the first two. I played the really first awesome. one. I'm Are you interested guys in Arkham Knight for the next one coming out. It looks good. Like it looks I good. I've I thought it looked actually really good. Like, it looks. I it looks great. It. it looks awesome. Yeah. The I think there's more open world elements to it. I love open world. Yeah. To an extent. To an extent, like GTA, like like I like for example, I don't like GTA. I don't know why. Wow, you're like it's one of just, the. Minor- you're the minority in yeah, this. Yeah, I'm the super minority. I don't like GTA. I don't know what it is. I just I'm just not drawn to that style of gameplay. Right. Of I don't like sandbox. Sandbox, yeah. Because you're it's right. a sandbox game. Yeah. For me, because, for example, yeah. one of my favorite games was Need for Speed Underground Two. Because not only did you have You sound like you're reading an essay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just started talking like in a very Robotic kind of way. Yeah, I, it's like I this tend, is true. <laughs> I tend to do that. That's okay. I don't know why. That's okay. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> I, I, digress. I digress. In conclusion, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the uh, that game it was it was so immersive because of the fact that it had so much customizability that that games nowadays don't have racing games specifically. Yeah, they're they're just Those like few focused games on that. that come out that say they have customizability have so few options that it's here's laughable. Your skin. It's laughable it's like, and here's comparable. Here's your car skin. You can change that. It's laughable comparable uh, to Need for Speed. Mm-hmm. And then even Need for Speed stop doing it. I don't I know why. I swear to like, you, still attack me. <laughs> I feel like I don't know. I don't oh. know what happened to it. Uh, but that game also had open world. I was um, able to take what I you, made. Were you able to drive, drive around? around? Just drive. Yeah. So like kind you of. You can drive between races. But here's the thing. Um, wasn't the cruise supposed to be like that? Or Isn't you can it? Just drive around. Is it like that? I, I'm I, pretty sure it is. It is open world. world. <laughs> yeah. My my friend bought it and returned it like I've two days later. It? Did you? Was that you? No. No. The, I played it though. It's oh, terrible. You played it? Yeah. Yeah. They they hit so many I, high points and like previous installments of games but for some reason they're like no we're gonna go away from that and focus on graphics or oh I hate that I hate I just hate make people. it fun no I hate people who are so focused on the way that a game looks and they look past completely or even don't even complain about how crappy the game actually is I'm sure you guys have heard this before from me specifically, high definition crap is still crap. Yeah, it's just a polished turd. Like it doesn't. <laughs> it's polished. It turd. doesn't really make a game better just by having great graphics. It just shines better. It just sh- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> high fat shit. It's, It'll still smell like. There shit. are so many games that have been coming out, indie games. Here, that are, here's a perfect way you can describe it. You can polish the shit, but it will still smell like shit. <laughs> Exactly. I don't exactly. know. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else. <laughs> to me, it's like, oh my god! You can words, polish it. You can shine it, but it'll by. still smell and look like shit. Yeah. Like if if the game doesn't play well and it's like, it, or just the mechanics don't if they're yeah. if it's broken 
A lot of people that I know or have heard speak have constantly been saying, oh, it's okay, the graphics are great. I love the graphics. The yeah. graphics are so good. You're like, how do you like the game? Like, oh, I can, uh, it's okay. I can run it on my overclocked computer and it looks so <laughs> great. PC it's just like, we're yeah. talking about Crisis. Because <laughs> that's what I'm hearing right now. That's what resonates with me when crisis? you say that. Crisis? Yeah, crisis especially by the, the first third one, ones. terrible. Like, yeah. completely terrible. The game is so and bad. And these are the and same it... people that complain about Call of Duty being shit every year. It's like, mm, Call of Duty at least tries to offer something new compared yeah. to Yeah, exactly. It's like, is terrible. you know what, oh actually, God. sorry, I, or Chris, if you want to continue, then I'll, I'll put in my... Well, no, I was. that was pretty much it. Like, for me... The, the the whole high different like for me a game has to be good for example the witcher the way that it looks right now it's it's an open world game that has a story to it it lets yeah. you explore but you also have objectives you can do whereas some games so an just, rpg yeah i don't like grand theft auto is not an rpg is it nope not not in the sense that well it's leveling up and it's a sandbox action game. Yeah, it's a sandbox. So RPG, well, open it, world are good. Wouldn't it be an RPG just because you have to level up in order to unlock it's, certain it's things? It's not a role playing game per se, in the sense that you don't have to level. It's any not stats. a tradition. It's not a tradition. You don't have to play. level any stats. You don't yeah, have yeah. to manage well, any inventory. Yeah, you do. Stats. Yeah, you have shooting and. You don't have to. No. I I went through the entire game without leveling a single stat. Yeah. As well as Fair you enough. don't have to manage an inventory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to manage stamina. No, that is really That's relevant. It's yeah, you know what? If, if we're, a, we're looking at like we're we're talking about games like it's Standard it's in a different RPG. it's in a different group. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's a different Whereas Witcher is in the group of like Skyrim, Fallout, yeah, yeah. Um, action pa- RPG, Dragon, Mario, Dragon yeah. Quest, Dragon uh, Quest, Final Fantasy, Dragon Age. Final Fantasy. Going back to yeah. my favorite game, like I'm really into those Mass kinds of effect. RPGs. Um, Assassin's you were Creed, actually gonna say something. Yeah. Oh yeah, he mentioned Call of Duty, and it just reminded me like I was watching the Black Ops Three trailer, mm-hmm. and uh, cash money. They do they do make cinematic trailers. I'm talking about the one that showed like the gameplay reveal, and I'm glad they use like I guess what what you see when you play it, like they, they actual don't, gameplay. Yeah, As they do it from certain like angles and stuff, yeah, yeah. but for the most part, what you see is what you get. And you know what me, what he said was. Right, and what Dylan said was Infinity Ward or Treyarch or whatever, Sledgehammer, whoever's making it, the graphics do get better a bit each year, but, but it's oh, not like Dylan price. said, right, because it's a, especially with the especially Xbox with one, the hardware, you know, the yeah. hardware's improving, um, and they're yeah, making that's why ways we, of we moved stuff. away from 16-bit and right. 8-bit gaming. Right, um, Dylan said, what Dylan said is true, like they do try to offer something new every year. Like they do, they do have whether a, or not it's successful is irrelevant, but they try and do something new. And you know what? You can't fault them. They have a flawless money making machine. Yeah, yep. people want, and people are paying for year, it year, year after, after year. year. They're setting goals and making money. They're setting new records that oh, movie black, companies black, aren't like, used uh, to seeing. Advanced Warfare or Ghost didn't sell as well as the last yeah, one. Oh, but so it's still past like a billion. Exactly, or whatever. Still, and you like, know, you like almost fault them. every like, other. It's game one of the that most successful tra- franchises. I'm not going to call along with the Grand yeah. Theft Auto. I'm not going to call them the problem. We're the problem. We're feeding the machine. Yeah. Yep. And if you want change, but like. How do you change Call of Duty so that you, you have to choke them out? That you're, but that you'd be um, impressed or you're satisfied with what here, like what that they're now awesome. You're, in, now you're dabbling in the fact that like everyone wants something else out of Call of Duty. For yeah, sure. and, so and you're what, gonna have so many different. It's like, what do you versions. want? What is sudden, your like, ideal? You want, Call yeah. of Duty. you want horses? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do you want la- do you want lasers? They give you lasers. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, we don't like future. We're you're gonna go back to World War Two. Like they the, they played that out. They have to go to the future with advanced warfare and with Black Only Ops Three because people Wars. are bitching about them keeping going back to World War Two. Was it broken? No, but people were complaining about it, so of course they have to change it, right? Yeah. yeah. Give me. us Call of Duty Modern Warfare <laughs> HD Remastered. Yeah. Super Edition. They've already done that. <laughs> the, the thing is, though, like, yeah, with, I, uh, with I find with, with uh, an argument such such as this one, a lot of the times one side gets super loud about something they don't like. And the other side is completely quiet because they're yeah. completely content with what the game is right now. I want better graphics. They, they quotes from the PC company users. listens. Yeah, the company listens to this loud group of people, and then 
the the group that was quiet at first now speaks out even yeah, louder and because like, oh why didn't you, why'd you listen to yeah, us yeah why'd you change like, we we liked how it was before and it's just like it, it's a constant we want Geralt of Rivia in Call of Duty Mo- <laughs> Black <laughs> Ops Three do it now or we're not gonna be happy and it just it just the company is is just between a rock and a hard place they can never win well, but well they can win because they're making a lot of money. <laughs> In this specific case, they do always win because yeah. they're always setting records. So, hey, Sebastian, your favorite game? Here it comes. Oh uh, yes, Gwent, the <laughs> best card game ever. Here, oh, let me. Right. I want to play the. Yeah, for sure. I'll I'll do this. Yeah, talk to bit. him. He he's like, okay, I'm gonna leave now. By the way, <laughs> are you busy? Are, are like, yeah, are, like, are you do busy? Do you have any time? And like, I'm like, no. Uh, sure. I don't have any time. Can you stay for a game of Gwent? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, Gwent, why did you say so earlier? Yeah. Um, no, but, like, going back, like, um, with the Black Ops 3, like, I think, I think I'm excited. I've bought, I've bought all, all I of the Call of Duty since, purchased since all Modern Warfare. except for Ghosts. I, I got Ghosts. Yeah, that, that's, right when, um, that's why they didn't break the record. Ghost, Ghost came out, um, right when the new new consoles came out mm-hmm. so future shop and best buy had some sort of uh promo going on where you can trade in any game you owned doesn't matter if it was like nhl 2001 2004 actually i wouldn't have traded 2004 nhl 2004 was amazing but trade any game you have in your catalog and you Here can you go Gwent. thanks and you can um get either call of duty ghosts uh i think battlefield 4 at the time i think it came out around the same time yeah and assassin's creed black flag uh, for 360 or PS3, yeah, because they they had to clear their shelves mm-hmm. for yep. the for the next gen um, versions. So by the time I got to the front of the line, they're like, "Oh, we don't have Battlefield or or uh, <laughs> Black yes. Flag left." So uh, here's Ghost if you want. I was like, "Okay, sure." Yeah. That's a game. That was, That's a game. Yeah, that that was probably. Um, I knew people who were going that line and went to the EB Games across the street right away and tried to trade it in, sealed copy. Yeah. They'll, they'll give you 30, 10 cents. 35 bucks for you. <laughs> 10 cents. My worst experience. I, I think this is also like a big part of like why I became a collector. Is like I remember back with the original Xbox, I used to buy a game for 30 bucks. I'd be able to resell it for like 15 at least. Like half the value was still there a year later. Now if you go back and try and sell a game a year later, like fuck, you'd be lucky if you get $10, or $7. Yeah. Like shit. Like I remember uh, the, the breaking point for me had to be when my friend bought me a brand new copy of Crackdown 2. Crackdown 2, which they were then, I beat the game, whatever, we had our fun with it. I beat the game. They were still selling it on the shelves at $60. Oh, shit. 360 right? Still selling it for 60 bucks. So I was like, oh, okay, it's only been two weeks since the game's out. Yeah. They were selling the used copy of the game for $40. So I was like, oh, okay, I can get some pretty good money out of this, whatever, right? Tried to sell it. He offered me fifty cents. I told him to go fuck himself. I was like, "Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep that." Buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. <laughs> yeah. All I was day. Just like, so you guys are making an eight thousand percent profit off of this copy of the game. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna give that to you. And then you walk, you walk away, and they're yeah. like, "Well, there goes another one. We don't get another copy of Crackdown oh, 2. So stupid. And that was definitely my breaking point with, with selling games. And I started, like, you guys have seen my collection. I have, like, over 200 games because of Jesus. that experience. Yeah. That's and, just, yeah, so I, I don't know. I'd say now that I'm not playing, I can actually uh, talk about games and stuff like that. I'd say, for me, a majority of the games that I play are probably FPSs as well as... Uh, what, what does that mean for the crowd first, out there? <laughs> First-person shooters. Call you know? of Duty. Call of Duty, <laughs> Battlefield, uh, Halo... Oh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, FPS is car games because I, I love cars. Uh, Forza is my shit. I'll play that. I'll pop that in Have whenever I'm bored. Play it. Yeah, uh, it's uh-huh, it's okay. It's my shit. I it's, love it's a good it's a good sim game, the but North the remembers. variety isn't as oh yeah, as, no, no, it's no, not no. as flushed out as Forza is, and it obviously has to do with the marketing budget that Microsoft yeah. has versus Grid. Yeah, Gearbox or not Gearbox, Whoever, Codemasters. Uh, yeah, yeah. So other than that. Um, racing games and then sandbox games sorry Chris I love those yeah. love them to pieces yep. Grand Theft Auto like uh, there's something like as you guys can obviously see from my gamer score there's something in a game that makes me want to keep playing it and uh, like I love games with replayability and mm-hmm. those typically end up being 
sandbox games where I can go back and even without a mission or with a mission just play hours and hours of the game just messing with the game mechanics and games that I find that I, I love to do that in number one on that list and number one on my list of games all time is Just Cause 2 and uh, Topical Just Cause 3 is, is finally going to be coming out relatively soon and I can't wait but we'll get back to that so Just Cause 2 Red Faction I love the entire series but I have to say that uh, Red Faction oh, I can't remember what it's called This the one uh, late before Armageddon was the best oh. and uh, obviously Grand Theft Auto but even better than Grand Theft Auto in my opinion is Saints Row I know I'll get some flack for that but I love it you like Saints Row more I than love, Grand Theft Auto I love Saints Row it's just the perfect amount of goofiness like, I feel like Grand Theft Auto kind of fell out of love with me with 4. I just hated 4. Mm-hmm. And, like, Saints Row 2 picked up just where hey, San Andreas... Hey, Nico, you want to go bowling? <laughs> Cousin! I freaking hate that game. And no. the cars all drop and drive like shopping carts filled with bricks. <laughs> right? They all felt the same? Oh, my God. In a game called Grand Theft Auto, the vehicles are terrible. That yeah. makes perfect sense to me. Now I'm just overkilling this guy right <laughs> yeah, now. I was just about to say... What, 34 to 19? 34 to... <laughs> I think I'm going to pass... Oh man, terrible. Boom! Wow. <laughs> Victory. Victory, alright, I just Go wanted to rape it. this first guy. Jeez. Yeah. For the record, I did not actually rape anyone. I just want to clear the fear. I assaulted him. That escalator. Within, within the digital realm of the game that we are playing. And then we got to talk in this guy. Game with the guy. You can hear the guy crying in the background. <laughs> I lost Gwent. <laughs> Um, so, we've talked about a lot of games. Now, a lot of those games recently, and I'm talking about like within the span of like maybe the last half decade, last five years, um, have gone in like HD remasters. Technically, wow. GTA V, like it was released on uh, 360 and PS3 first, and then upgraded to Xbox One, PlayStation 4. That's technically a... HD like I guess remake you can even say because it wasn't released at the same time and then P- and then it came out on PC with graphical improvements oh, with, the, with the PC thing like usually it is that PC hey games guys, come later because it's always based on how well they can port it <laughs> but like you said there was a an Xbox 360 slash PS3 My release word. Which then, even even before any of this was released, they already announced that they were going to be releasing, or sorry, re-releasing. Don't, don't that die against Machete. He game. has no Machete. Machete. <laughs> machete kill. Machete block. Sorry, go on. They were going to release the same exact game for the what is now it. current gen. Mm. They already planned on taking your money twice. Whether you want to but, look at it know, that what? way or that's not. not, that's not their fault. Like we could have, like PC people well, waited. Yeah, no, they didn't totally. have to go. They, they didn't just... have to go out and buy a console to. Yeah, to but play that's it. not a viable no. option, right? No, right? no, no, no. You're right. But technically, they could have just put all that effort into into the one the single game. release, right? Well, but at the time, were... I don't think they knew the power of the next gen consoles. So they actually, sure these guys are well, if they were they already needed developing to develop a game more, for it's that more like console. they made a billion dollars and they were like, let's squeeze more money out of this. Right. Yeah. That's definitely no. They knew they were going to squeeze a million dollar uh, a billion dollars out of this. So I let's don't do think it they twice. They could have possibly known that, but <laughs> oh come on, how like <laughs> the G- auto, This is G- a, G- a couple is a couple million. Popular. Yes, it's one of the. I don't think they could have possibly have imagined that they were going to hit the record in a week or something. too. Yeah. It was a week. Yeah. It was something ridiculous. Ridiculous it was the short first amount week, of time. I think. Yeah. Like yeah. wasn't it them and uh and COD? Black Ops two was the previous record holder. Yeah. And then uh COD kinda of responded, they're just like, ha, huh, that was that good was effort. Good. And thanks then they for like holding our title smashed for a it again. Yeah, they were like, yeah. Thanks for holding our title for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But yeah, the that's I would still count that as a re-release I just because power. whether you want to want to look at it as them saying oh don't worry like uh, we have to we have to let it out we have to uh, send it out twice only because we want whatever the reasoning is they're they're taking money from you twice oh, whether you only bought it once or not there were so many people that bought it for both consoles it's it's phenomenal yeah it's definitely one of the most uh uh, I guess richest uh, video game franchises, along with the likes of Mario, um, 
Final so. Fantasy because they'll keep making those forever. <laughs> yeah, we'll just keep adding a few more monies into Final that. Final Fantasy. Yeah. Is I not remember that. Okay. That was such a fun. Uh, was, and for you, because you said that you really liked Final Fantasy X. Ten. Ten. Final Fantasy X. Uh, Jeez, I'm getting they, wrecked. Yeah. Did you buy. All the, of them? No, the Final oh, Fantasy X well, remake, the, the first time it came yes, out, and this most recent one? N- not the most recent one, and that's because I don't have a PS4. I still have my PS3, mm-hmm. so I bought the Final Fantasy remake on that, because I don't have a PlayStation 2 anymore. So I had to relive my childhood in, in that game. Uh, Please ignore that. <laughs> you are dead. Yeah. That's Cut. what happens when you go and fight a level 7 Wraith. I don't ever pay attention to that. <laughs> Um, if would it appears, I, would it, it must be something you would I buy? Fight. Would I buy the second remake? Uh, if I, if I had a PlayStation Four, if I didn't have my PS Three anymore, maybe because they don't charge the full price for a remaster usually. So usually oh no, they like, definitely don't. 10, 15, the same way, like at a movie theater, whenever they do the family family night or whatever, they also of older charge movies. like two fifty yeah. instead of the regular older twelve dollars. Well I would hope if you're giving me content that's over ten years <laughs> yeah. old, I'm not gonna be charged per Guys, like, you guys wanna watch the like nut job or free birds thing, again? Yeah, it's the same yeah. thing with uh, with the games, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well because they that's yeah, that's dumb if they no, charge the full price. How do you guys thing? feel about them constantly making I hate remakes? It. Oh my god, it just it doesn't well, bode well. Here's the thing. When the, when they announce one and it's not a game that I absolutely love, then I'm like eh I just punch my horse. <laughs> punch your horse. That's what I do. I punch my horse when I hear about another <laughs> HD <or> Master. <laughs> right in the ass. Right in the ass. Can we get that trailer? Well, like, when when the they game? announced the Final Fantasy remake the first time, oh, for just yeah. PlayStation 3, I was like, oh my god, I'm going to get a PlayStation 3 just for this. And Last of Us, which I still haven't beaten. I need right. to get on that. Um, oh, and then the freaking Last of Us remake? They, yeah, they did that for the PS4. Oh my god. Uh, it's like we this literally I, came out two years ago. We could we could be talking about twenty like straight minutes of just naming HD remakes. Gears of War that's, that's apparently coming up. And yes. and you know what? For Master me, Chief Collection. Oh, are they, that's is fine. That a, wait. That's fine too. Is that I feel a like remake though for Gears of War? Or are it's it's definitely gonna be re- HD remake because oh, okay. some like of them the first were three released games. in like seven twenty p. Yeah, yeah. Because like there were the first games on the three sixty, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, the Gears of War by far sold the 360 to me. If I wasn't already sold, no, not Halo. With Halo didn't yeah. come out yet. Yeah, Halo was 2007. Because oh, yeah, so Gears of War was one. Yeah. Of Gears of War was the same 2005. with Assassin's Creed, right? What, when did the, the first Assassin's Creed come out? I have no idea. It wasn't you know what? Like before it became a yearly I thing, like, Assassin's, like Creed. Assassin's Creed. I the first one. Assassin's Creed is now what okay. Black Call of Duty is. It didn't it's, they're 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 releasing like. Two or three a year. Because it's, it's a profitable model. That's right. what I'm saying. Like people but are faulting it, but like they're feeding into it. Yeah, and but you I know don't what? see. But are if there they that many? Up, what? Are there that many glitches and and you know, bad I, launches as COD has? COD doesn't have that many bad launches. They don't, no. other than server issues. But that's because there's a boat. Why? Well, that being said, Assassin's Creed out. hasn't had like a really really bad launch like this ever since Unity. Oh, well, like, since Unity. Sorry, this Unity is the is, launch that yeah, was like, that ruined it, and people are like, shit. no, this. This shouldn't be a yearly thing. A game like that shouldn't be a yearly thing. No, but I, I'm wondering, like, that's got to be, like, a major error on the developer's part. Just because, how do you even let something like that even pass past Alpha or Beta? <laughs> are like, you s- how are you not having people... Oh, jeez, my words. They don't have time to send it to people for game testing. Come on, you Come can on, get up they there. They totally can. Come well, on. not if they're trying to do a year thing. Yeah. Come on, Roach. You can do it. It's fine. Oh, whoa. <laughs> it's fine. Well, we just broke the game. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, there we go. All Whoa. Right. <laughs> I wonder if I can call him up now. That was arm day. Did you see that? He just like, pulled himself up. Up and over. Oh, my God. <laughs> These guards are like, wow. You must be a witcher. <laughs> you must be a witcher. No, it's not, it's not what I'm I also no. I also like that like people don't recognize that he's a witcher. He clearly doesn't look like a normal person. He doesn't look like no, him. No locals like, allowed. Because, no. yeah, he totally we're, looks we're like every than... <laughs> peasant that's living in yeah. that town down below. The soldiers are like... As We're well as wearing like, cooler stuff. He's wearing better armor than like every soldier in here. Yeah. How is it even possible that he's like a normal civilian? <laughs> and all these soldiers are like, ah, oh, he's just another peasant. Yeah. Should we let this peasant up towards our, our emperor or our commander? Sure. Why not? Mm, <laughs> Whetstone, there you are. Um. Hey. Yeah, like you, you know what? HD, it's a way. F- HD remasters are taking away valuable time and effort that companies can be putting towards new 
property. New, new IPs, new games, right? New but, IPs or even the next game in a series. But because we live in a capitalist, capitalist they want to society, make they don't care about new IPs because new IPs don't necessarily make the money. Franchises do. Franchises Destiny. make the money because they've already been tested and they know that there's a market for them. Of course. The way Assassin's Creed. They could have made a completely different game or even COD. Like they could have gone on and made other new IPs, but they didn't. Why? Because Titanfall. Co- but that was that was because wasn't it because someone they from uh, someone they broke away from Call of Duty. All those yeah. Guys that so they, that was a more personal. Reason, but they're like, but they what can we back. do that's like Call of Duty but different? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, and and it was amazing. So yeah, exactly. Like, Apparently now there's only like two thousand people working or uh, not working playing, playing it online. Yeah, 2000. and that's like if you go on Call of Duty Modern Warfare on three sixty, you'll find the same amount of people. In one lobby, yeah. Yeah. Two thousand. Yeah. yeah, that's it. It's playing Titanfall. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Damn. Whereas, like, if you log into like, it yet. it's because it's you, only on one. It's yeah. only on one yeah, console, I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. But if you log in, but if you log into um, Advanced Warfare, even though it's way newer, it's it's yeah. called you. You can't really compare um, how many people lunges. are playing each one. Yeah. But you log into Advanced Warfare a year later, it's still got twenty thousand. users. I am sure. actually still playing Black Ops Two on three hundred and sixty. On right? three hundred and sixty. That's because you don't have any of the new consoles. Yeah. Yeah, so just a disclaimer oh God, to why are these guys all our oh listeners. I think Your I horse may is so have scared. drawn my sword. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, run, dude. It's just fine. a disclaimer to all our listeners. I am I am just still playing my 360 because I have not been convinced by PS4 or Xbox One to oh, get it. The only reason I am kind of leaning towards an Xbox One is because my friends are playing. Hey. Yeah, and that's ultimately <laughs> what it should come down to. Like, For sure. What will you enjoy playing not because not one's yourself. more popular yeah yeah just like especially if you're an online per- gamer yeah like you want to oh and not, it's not even that I'm like, more, yeah. i literally got i have gta 5 for ps3 yeah i literally got that to play with my friends who are also playing it on their ps3s mm-hmm. right the only reason i get things is to play with friends right because that's that's what's fun for me right and as of right now, like the way that the two consoles launched, That's the reason was, I got the Witcher Three <laughs> <laughs> to play by yourself online. That's right. While talking <laughs> least, to your friends. Yeah. And while talking okay, well, to your friends. If you're, yeah, if you're gonna play a single player game, buy it on whatever console. Mm-hmm. But like, I like you were about to say, I bought it on Xbox One because at least I could still play, uh, talk to my friends yeah. while I play it alone. So, like, my my major... You guys have brought up two interesting points while we were kind of talking about this, which is, one, HD Remix. I say the only reason I'm really, really not down with it is just because it sets a trend, which sucks. Yeah. And that trend is the fact that, like, companies are looking toward their back catalog and not inventing or even creating new things for them to then make money off of because they know that they can profit off of existing work like they don't have to put more work into it yeah that being said i'm not fully against it there are some hd remakes which add a lot a lot to the game and it's also nice when they release with like dlc that are released previously it's like you'll get the games i'm, I'm assuming you're gonna say borderlands borderlands yeah there was dlc for borderlands you right? got it a and ton of the dlc and it came with the hands of jack you collection. got it for the price of one game yeah they first of all so i played borderlands 2 for the 360 then i bought my xbox one then the pre-sequel came out, but it didn't come out for the Xbox One. So they didn't try and choke people out of that extra money. Uh-huh. Then they released the complete Handsome Jack collection on the One, and they let you take your game saves from both games. So I was playing the Handsome Jack collection, uh, the sorry, uh, the pre-sequel for the first time on the Xbox One, and that is something that the company supported for the same price as the pre-sequel. Yeah. And they gave me all of the DLC, as well as DLC that hasn't even released yet. The the Claptrap DLC hadn't even released for the 360 version, but they still gave it to you if you bought the Handsome Jack collection. Like, that's nice intelligent. They've given you everything. It's the complete collection yeah. for those two games. None of this bullshit. I'm going to take money from you little in by every, little. In every way possible. Every way possible. Oh. Microtransactions are the worst. 
any kind of microtransactions where are you sure you don't want to buy the skin for five dollars <laughs> It's not. Oh, it's not even that. It's and like, I think what's it's game changing. Yeah, yeah. You no, know what game changing? You want to buy this gun if it, if it gives for you, ten dollars? Yeah, if it gives you an or advantage online, just because somebody's willing to spend money, it shouldn't that shouldn't be? It shouldn't. Be I'm a thing. I'm not for or against that per se because like listen, like I'm all about capitalism. Like make your money capitalism. where you need to. Are you sure if, you're not a communist? I, I'm absolutely positive. Vladimir even though I'm Putin's Canadian, listening in. Even though I'm Canadian, I don't think I'm communist. <laughs> Only because, and this is the one thing, is for me, has to be, if someone is a 50-year-old man who's playing Call of Duty, he doesn't have as much time as that 20-year-old kid playing yeah. the game. He doesn't have time to... Level if up. he has the extra money, let him buy it. That's I'm like... Um, that. But it needs to be stuff that's still available to that kid who wants to play through it fair. Good. That's my only issue. Good example is Grand Theft Auto Online. You can buy the bull shark cards that will give you, like, say, $500,000 in yep. game money for, I don't remember how much it costs, 20 bucks, let's say. Makes sense, because you can spend some time in the game making that mon much money. Yep. Heist, missions, whatever yeah, you want. That's Selling cars. Agreed. Um, or you can spend your own money and get the 500000 so you could buy that car or that property um, that you wanted to. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 game changing. Like you did receive the money quicker than somebody yeah. else did, but and the options open to anyone that wants to, as long as you have like a credit card or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the end, it's not like it gives a player an it's unfair not game advantage. Breaking. It's not game breaking, or exactly. Whereas, um, you know, a if, lot of if you're like FPS is like yeah, if you get the better armor or, or better. Um, Weapon just because you paid for it, uh, yeah, that's that's a little messed up. Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden you have a greater advantage of killing somebody else. Yeah, and a great example for for that has to be Battlefield for me. Battlefield Three, you could purchase things, even Battlefield Four, you could purchase things that people wouldn't see for almost like forty days of gameplay. They may never see those unlocks, but you can purchase it for fifteen dollars. Like, that to me just doesn't make any sense. Uh -huh. It's like, it has to be equally attainable for all players. And that's what I believe. But, I mean, monetize it how you need to, I guess. Quality for all. Yeah. I, actually, Dylan. I actually like the... Uh, president, president of Canada's Gaming Corporation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, I like the, actually the point that you brought up about the fact that not everyone has the time yeah. to pump into games nowadays. Like, even me, I, I would totally rather oh, pick up a game that is just pick up and play. For sure. Like COD. You just yeah. pick it up, you go and you play for 10 minutes, and then you leave. Yeah. I don't have time to go through the unlock trees of every weapon trying to get uh, leveled up for for God knows how many the, levels. And, and that's why the older Call of Duties are, are a lot better, because it was more simplistic. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, Call of Duty 4, you didn't really have to worry about unlocking attachments. Except through like headshots and stuff, like challenges. But levels, it's like you get stage, guns, right? but I just feel like it's so clustered now that say you're on Black Ops 3 or Advanced Warfare, when, when, when Black Ops 3 mm -hmm. comes out, I assume it'll be somewhat similar. You're Let's say you're, you're level 20 and you're facing a level 40, and all of a sudden this guy has like some ridiculous combination of weapons and perks that every time you run into him, you not lose. even based on skill or what people say, fucking lag. <laughs> Yeah, it's you. You have no chance because like it's just such a difference, and I don't know. I don't know There's what I'm a getting. Huge deficit between just make skill it and and just yeah. gameplay. Like, yeah, the mechanic. Yeah, <laughs> even in uh, my skill should be more. And, and that's why I really like I like Call of Duty over Battlefield, not because of graphics or anything. Like I love Battlefield. The Battlefield is an amazing shooter, but two major things that differentiate it for me have to be the fact that Battlefield not pick up and play. Yeah. If you start a Battlefield game, you're in that game for an hour. I don't yeah. care what anyone has to say. It takes you a very long time to complete a game or Conquest get any and... XP. Yeah. Call of Duty, 15 minutes, half an hour, I can complete two games. Double I know that XP for a fact. bonuses. I know that for a like fact. That. Yeah. And I can level up very, very quickly. I've done it many, many times with many prestigious. Yep. And I know that all the stuff that I unlock will still be there in the next prestige if I choose to do that. Yeah. The reason I don't like Battlefield... And, and this has to be, like, the major game-breaking thing is if you pick up that game late or you don't have a lot of hours oh, to man. clock toward that game, you're gone. That's tough. You're gone. That's it. 
If I, I jumped into that game, I think I bought it day one, but I didn't have time immediately. Like we were doing exams or something for uh, university. I just didn't have time. That's all it was. And I remember me and my friends started at the same level, but he just had time away because he was in co-op, so he was just playing the crap out of the game. And when I came back, he had so many unlocks, which to this day I don't even have at the game. Just because he had the time to play it. And anytime we jumped into a game, not based off level rank or anything like that, because the game doesn't structure itself like that, people had like unlocks for tanks and uh, aircrafts and jets that I would like never see. And anytime I got into a fight with them, one-on-one -on -one fight, we have the same equipment, they would murder me <laughs> because they had flares, smoke, extra missiles, like stuff that's just completely game-breaking. Yeah, bas basically... You, there's no way to catch breaking. up, really. Yeah, and it just turns you off from the game. It, it does yeah. majorly. The the replayability and pick, being able to pick up really attracts gamers. Mm -hmm. I as think. well as I think, I, and I like we kind of strayed away from this opinion, but I, I'd like to mention it is the fact that um like the reason I don't like HD remakes and something that's kind of started HD remakes, I think at least personally, is season passes. Like, oh, Seasons Passes are the reason why HD remakes... Are you trying to mouth the lady? <laughs> I'm a vagabond of a waste. Are, are the reason that, like, HD remakes have now become this thing. Because they're seeing that people are willing to commit their money ahead of time without getting anything. Like, a Seasons Pass, to me, has to offer me something unique to actually make it worthwhile purchasing. But I'm not going to just give you extra money for stuff that hasn't been announced. You haven't told me what I'm going to get for it. Like, I, I just don't understand how companies... As well as, like, you can always get it further down the line, which makes no sense to me ever. But, yeah, like, Seasons Passes, I'm, I'm so against them. When they first announced it, I don't remember what the first game that announced a Seasons Pass. But I remember Borderlands 2 was one of the first games with the Seasons Pass. I purchased it because I knew... Wait, 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 wait. That ass. <laughs> 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 that was a perfect archway. Um, I remember I bought it Looks because like a plum. they told me exactly what it would come with. They told me that it would give me two extra characters. And I was like, okay, perfect. I'm going to purchase all this content anyways. Might as well buy the Seasons Pass. I saved $15. They told me exactly what I was investing in. The content was not all available immediately. Yeah. But they told me what I was investing in. In games and in Seasons Passes now, it's stupid. You can buy the Seasons Pass before you can pre-order the game. Like, I don't know what DLC is coming out for Call of Duty. Why am I going to put free well, I With, with, with Call of Duty, I think you, you're kind of aware. You're Especially, kind of aware, but they don't tell you It's going to be some sort is. of map pack, maybe some new weapons, especially the newer ones, yeah. with, like Advanced Warfare, now, yeah, and yeah, probably yeah, some guns. sort of extra story in like their uh, side side and, objectives, like uh, and Zombies And that's an okay example, because they have a good back catalog yeah. and a good history of doing it well. Yeah, because but I know what you mean. Like, but, a lot of newer games... Shadows of Mortar, I think, didn't really. They didn't tell it. you what I got that uh, season's pass because it came with games with gold. It was like ten bucks, but uh, I wouldn't purchase that because I remember they didn't tell you what it came with it at all. Yeah. And like looking back at it now, if they had announced it, I definitely would have purchased it immediately, for sure. They gave you two free characters and four DLCs, as well as additional runes and like extra uh, stuff for your character skins and stuff. And the two characters had different abilities than the main character, as well as the additional DLCs. The Bright Lord DLC, amazing. I would have definitely purchased it if they had told me what it came with, but because it wasn't fully flushed out, I was just like, oh, this is just another one of these dumb DLC packs. For me, the way that, I, that, that this also detracts from the game is the fact that Content. because you pay them already, they already know they got money. Yeah. And it's just like, all right, guys, let you know, take it easy. Try not to waste all the money that we've already collected because yep. they've already paid us. Yep. Not like we're going to be getting anything else from them. Yeah. It's fine. You can half-ass it. And then the DLC, it, it loses quality in that, in that sense. As well as I feel like another really big thing is because now they can kind of predict what their budget is. They aren't focusing on the game as much as the resources they can implement toward it just by kind of calculating it, which is kind of weird to even think about. Like, oh, okay, they're paying $15. We want to plan for three DLCs. That's $5 per DLC. But you don't know how many people are going to just buy DLC number two. Just buy yeah. DLC number one. Like, it's a really weird way to, I don't know. 
I'm just I'm not about it at all in any way, shape, or form. Something moved. How do you feel about season's passes? Uh, I'm neither for them nor against them. <laughs> um, it's a very political stance. I'm uh, like you, like you guys were saying. There's some games that it'll work for some that some games that it won't. For instance, when I bought The Witcher Three in stores, the guy automatically was like, "Hey, do you want to buy the season's pass? You'll get an additional thirty dollars, thirty hours of uh, con- of gameplay and this and that." And I'm like, "No, like this game." There's like a hundred hours of, of, and like value in it already. Um, I don't need that extra thirty hours. It won't feel like a difference. Plus, CD Projekt Red did announce like sixteen smaller DLCs for free, where they're like you know skins, whatever things that won't Perfect. game change. But then again, this is a single player game. Yeah, doesn't that really doesn't matter. matter. Um, but things that will like keep you interested, like you can change Gerald's beard. Yeah, uh, Yennefer's freaking clothes. Like, there's a new skin for her. Like, why, well, why not? I'm glad that they didn't, like, shove that down, like, our throat with, like, microtransactions, like, 99 yeah. cents for, for new uh, beard styles yeah. or whatever. Just give it to the fans for free. Be like, as a thank you, here's some extra stuff that we added to the game for free. Um, if you like this game a lot, buy the season's pass. You'll get more more gameplay, uh, more hours of gameplay. And I'm like, cool. But, yeah, it's not for me. Now, a season's pass that I did buy. And looking back, I'm like, whatever was... For Dragon Ball Xenoverse, um, I bought the Seasons Pass because it was like $5 cheaper to buy the Seasons Pass rather than the three DLC separately. So I was like, okay, I'll buy the Seasons Pass because I'm a gigantic Dragon Ball Z fan. So And this was finally a, a fighting game that lived up to its predecessors like in on PlayStation 2 for, with Budokai and Budokai Tenkaichi. Um, oh, secret chest. Ooh, ooh. What are we going dead? Oh, it's, oh, it's no, locked. The key, don't oh, okay, awesome. Um, in which case I was like totally it fine. Made, with it made mat- mathematical sense, right? And I and I was gonna play it for a bit, and like it was one of the only games that it came out in the time. I think it was like February Baltimore. between big releases, so I had a few months to Something play it to carry you over till Witcher Three came out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think the third DLC is about to drop June 9th, if I'm not mistaken. But they were pretty open about what they were, what each one would have. It have. Some extra side quests, new characters, new uh, master trainers, new uh, items and uh, costumes and, and stuff. They didn't say how much of which, but each one, it, it added up to a fair value. So I was like, I like collecting a lot of um, different characters. And the story was good enough that I was like, yeah, I don't mind doing more side quests and feeling like I was rewarded for it, right? Um... Uh, an, another bad example of something I'm glad I didn't buy was Destiny, Destiny's uh, Season Pass or even any of their DLC. Yeah. It's, First of all, that was an expensive Season's Pass. Was like, it? Season's Pass actually are already expensive. The new Call of Duty Black Ops 3 one, yep. which the game hasn't even released, and they're like, we have a Season's Pass available for like $40, $50. Yeah. That's a whole new even game. Even the Advanced Warfare one was yeah. that much. That's It's a whole new game. Yep. You're dropping one hundred twenty, hundred thirty dollars yep. on one game, and and that's what like always makes me laugh is like these mothers line up to buy this game. Sorry, Call of Duty. We know what your target and demographic is: is kids who can't even afford to buy your game. <laughs> yeah. But mothers, like I literally see them like when I'm going to go pick up just the copy of the game. I'm not putting a warranty it's on. Like, it would you like to bullshit. buy the hardened edition or the prestige yeah. edition? Yeah. And this these mothers bullshit. like, oh, what will he get for that? Oh, well, he'll get all the zombie maps and twenty additional maps. Yeah, let's get that. Yeah. And then the bill comes up to like a hundred and sixty dollars, and she's like, "That's how much I I almost that's how much I would have paid for his console a couple of years ago." The guy just looks there like sheepishly, credit, and she pays for it anyways. It's like, like don't you're, buy you're it. the problem. You you're exactly why this is working. <laughs> it's so it's it's the truth, and it sucks because it's all uh, for Jimmy's Jimmy's happiness. Slap a little Jimmy's on there. Because then they don't have to deal with the kid. Oh, whining about it later. Like, yeah, for sure. All right, son. Just here's a game. Sit in front of it. I don't have to deal with you. I'll just do my own thing. You do your own thing. You do you, Scotty P. No, <laughs> no rugrats on this DLC bot. Yeah. Uh, purchase. No rugrats. No rugrats. No rugrats. There's lots of rugrats. <laughs> He's playing. It was horse. Slow before and... before Call of Duty came out, someone had to call me to tell them that tell me that they'd fuck my mother. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. What's uh, what's the season pass that you really like, Chris? Have you ever purchased one first? I have never. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. I'm gonna tell say. you. If it's my favorite game, I'll I'll probably buy it. Like Witcher Three is great, but I'm, it's not my favorite game. Yeah. Final Fantasy X is my favorite game. Or was back then. Uh, I think I'd go with mine, like of current. all time right now, or current is Fallout Three. I bought some of the DLC for that, and if I knew how much I liked it when you first started, when I first got yeah. it, I'd probably buy all the, all of it. I think I bought the Mothership Zeta DLC, um, Brotherhood of Steel, and Operation Anchorage. And yep. I think there was still like Point Lookout and something else. I can't remember. I I buy them in a heartbeat, especially if it came in a set. And actually, before like the season passes were things, they used to sell Game of the expansions. Year game of the year or expansion set yep. where it's like um, you'll get these new because that's what I was just about to say is yeah. I bought Fallout 3 when you bought it Yeah, played through it I didn't purchase any of the DLC because I knew it was going to be a game of the year Yeah, and then I gave I gifted my copy of Fallout 3 to my cousin and I bought the was, game of the year for myself Steam? Steam? no 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 uh, gifted I bought it all on uh, three. I literally handed it to him like in real life oh okay <laughs> I was like gifted <laughs> yeah makes sense I gave it to him, and he was happy, and I got the fucking Game of the Year edition, Ooh, which look, was amazing. Oh, damn. Hey, look, it's And they did the same sheep. thing with Borderlands, which was great, too. It's a fake sheep. It's a dead it's sheep. sheep. Not dead, it's just fake. No, it's they for real stuffed dead. It. They stuffed it. And in, oh, in response excellent. to your question, Dylan, yeah, I, I never, ever bought <laughs> a season's pass, literally because it's never, like, it, Don't for forget me, that, it's yeah, no yeah, point. Yeah, so. One game that I literally bought all the expansions and, and extra stuff for was Call of Duty Modern Warfare yeah, I think that 2. Was one of the first I like I Modern Warfare 2. Uh, I believe it was number 2. It was the one the Yeah, it was definitely number 2. Yeah, because the first one didn't have... I uh, bought all of They had one, I just think, so that Because I really liked the game, so I kept wanting the new maps. Jesus yeah. Christ. That was the, and that that was was the last... And only time... And also your friends bought it too, probably. Exactly. Assume, so you want exactly. to keep and play the, the like same I uh, said before, playlists. I try to play with my friends. Yeah. And with that, uh, there, that was the last and Hold only it, game gonna... I've ever felt that if there you. was an expansion, or sorry, a season's pass, that would have been the game that I would have bought it for. Because I knew I was going to buy all the expansions for that. Nowadays, sure? I literally do not look at the expansions, at bonus content of any game. Game? Game, sorry. <laughs> okay. Any game. Ca- any game of any game at all. It's just the only time I ever see would you like to purchase this is if it's in an in-game menu and you have to press X to go to oh, the those. Xbox yeah. uh, store. live store or whatever. So, halfway for me, I hate expansions because well, I don't hate them. Oh jeez, I thought I had. I it. feel like it's oh. more of a love hate kind of thing. I hate them for the fact just, that it's technically away? an unfinished game. They don't finish the game and then they just finish it later for more money. Yeah. DLC at launch makes me mad. I'm yeah. Like you could have included this in Destiny. The game. Yeah. D- oh, DLC, DLC at launch. Here's the thing with Destiny. DLC at D- launch not, is... D- not free DLC that's not a pre-order bonus at launch makes me so mad. I'm like... Oh, Here's the thing God. with Destiny, because like our pretty much who we follow and love, and we got the idea of making a podcast style of gameplay and, and just talking about shooting the shit about gameplay, is Funhouse. Love them to death. Thank you, Funhouse. Give us Four. a shout out. <laughs> We're giving you, yeah. Give us a shout out. Let us gain those followers and viewers. But follow thank, for like, follow. For they're just so interested in like interesting, and they know their shit. Mm-hmm. Um, they were recently talking about Destiny again, and they bring up good points of saying, you know what, Destiny was marketed as something, and when it came out, it was something, something different. Else entirely. Here's the thing: when I when we played Destiny when it first came out, um, we enjoyed it. It was a fun game to. Kind of um, grind and uh, okay, I, okay. I'll, I'll speak for myself. Yeah, I enjoyed it, but you beat the game. The crucibles weren't that great. You beat the game. You can grind for better gear, and then it's basically you're not you're not grinding to get experience. You're grinding to get this randomly generated light on your armor to improve your level. 
and hopefully get to high enough level to do raids or strikes or whatever. And then all of a sudden, I remember when near the end of the game we found a level, or they they um, oh, geez. around the time a couple of like months into Destiny's release, they're like we found an area that is supposed to be unlocked at yeah with the DLC, and it's like it's already in the game. Yep. What, yep. Are you kidding me? I think that also, as well as Mortal Kombat X's DLC or a game that had character had like characters just locked behind the lock screen. You just yep. need the key to unlock them, but they're, they're already in game. It's already in the code. It's on the CD. It's yeah. on the CD, but you just need to but pay extra. But it's behind a paywall. Paywall. Like, oh no, man. the thing that I know you were talking, you wanted to say something about Mortal Kombat. X's yeah. Oh, okay. DLC. We'll, we'll talk about it because, like, I feel like that's not a fair association. Yes and no. It is on disc, but it is content that adds to the game. So I'll allow that. There's enough already on the disc that can justify a sixty dollar game. Yeah. Destiny is an incomplete experience. No matter what anyone has to say about it, it is not a full-fledged game in and of itself. It because should... throughout the entire fucking experience, they do not fail to remind me that there are going to be other games. And that there is DLC that I need to play. Like, they take us to areas just to be like, hey, so just to let you know, DLC. Like, uh, one of the one of the factions that you meet, the... I don't even know what they are, like the Dark Elf-looking motherfuckers. They literally take right. you there... So you're like, oh, there's this whole other society we know nothing about. The Reef? No. Yeah, the Reef. The it Reef. The Reef. I haven't played it in so long that I yeah. could care less. But yeah, they take us there literally just to say, hey, this is what the DLC is going to be about. Well, that's a big head like on the side of your horse. Yeah. I'm surprised it's not leaning over being like, I'm going to steer left. <laughs> yeah. As well as yeah. uh, even throughout the game, like I, don't, I, I played the game twice now throughout, and I don't even know what the fuck the game's about. Like what is what is that? It's Peter like, Dinklage leading yeah. you to. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> that's the entire Wait, thing. please buy, please buy the rest of the story for five dollars. <laughs> please 15. unlock the rest oh of the God. sound clip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsor us. <laughs> Honestly, that happened because I was like, wait, what is the story about? But, <laughs> and, um, like, seriously, though, like, they don't tell you what that fucking floating circle is. They don't tell you what the Guardian and Ghost connection is. Like, actually, so they much... do, but, like, you have to read it on, like, their website. They have oh, a lot yeah, of lore. Yeah. They built built the lore, kind of like what they did with Halo. But they're like, if you want to hear more about the story, you can log oh, on here. But here's the action in the game. Yeah. Maybe that's why it felt less, because the story mm. wasn't as big. However, that, that doesn't what? count though. You can't be like, "Oh, go on our website." Right, cuz you want you want to hear the story cuz they also <laughs> through the fucking content oh. that I'm purchasing. Yeah. yeah, not through free content that anyone can look up. That's like true. if I wanted to read, I'd buy a book. Yeah, like fuck. <laughs> books have You know those stories. Halo books? Yeah, people actually purchase those because it was outside of the game. I still got the full like story. It's just if I wanted more on the background right. of the story, I went to the book. Guess what? They don't even have the main story in the fucking game. Like, if you don't explain to me what, like, the main shit is, like, how am I supposed to even like your game? I don't know. Like, Destiny is just, like, the perfect example of of capitalism. It's exactly what is wrong with gaming. It is. Like, and not to mention, they were like, oh, yeah, this game that we're coming out with, it's going to be a 10-year game. Uh, We're very excited for it. They lied. They lied from the beginning. They knew that it wasn't going to be one game that lasted 10 years. They were always planning on having multiple games. They did. They never lie. They misled. once. Yeah, they never once alluded to the fact that it was going to be multiple copies, like Destiny One, Destiny Two, Destiny Three. They said that they wanted this game, like World of Warcraft, to last ten years. I, I was in EB Games when my buddy uh, picked up his copy of Destiny, and the guy said the same thing. He's like, "Would you like to buy? Would you like to um, first of all the buy the warranty right? for three dollars and?" Protect your game over what three years or two years? Yeah, it's like whatever because it is. this game is like they're gonna, be, gonna be releasing. Game. The guy was like, the horse got the, the game's yeah. supposed to have a like, ten year lifespan, so like you should have protect your copy. And by the way, by the seasons pass because like there's gonna be a lot of like content coming yeah. out. And my friend was like, I'm okay. First of all, I'm gonna download it onto my hard drive and make the you disc pretty much inferior. Besides actually hey. putting it in so that it says, but okay, you own the game. Yeah. So let's play the content that you downloaded. I just want to but say it, it, we were kind of like, this game's not going to be 10 years. It's not that kind of game. They're, they're, they're trying to say it's an, like an MMO. They're trying to make the World of Warcraft model and make maybe expansions. Like it's House of Wolves expansion. Yeah, but that's not even what they plan to do. That's like, that's, gonna, what, that's exactly what I'm saying. They're going to be making another 
Destiny 2. Exactly. In, let's say two years from now. They don't plan on expanding on this game at all. They're just the Destiny franchise. Yeah. That's the they Which is such a same. lie. Yeah. They, like, they blatantly like, kind of like... And they sold so money. many people on that concept. Yeah. Whereas World of Warcraft, it's like you can buy... The it's, one disc for like nine bucks and now. And then if you want, expansions yeah. that have like... But it's a fully fledged game by itself. Yeah. That you has can, lasted ten, ga- ten iterations on that one version of the game. Right. I don't know. I have, I have major, major qualms with that. And uh, I don't know. Just like companies in general, when they like lie about shit and like they, they kind of go back on their word, I, I just feel like very disheartened and distrusting in that company. Like, I don't know. A big thing for me is that like the internet is not very fair in its judgment of companies. Like one company can do one thing and because like it's like, oh yeah, these are the golden boys. No one says shit about it. But if another company does it, then it's like, oh, ho, ho, let's just fucking jump on that. And, like, good example of that is during E3. Like, people jumped on Microsoft when they were like, oh, it's going to be always online, this, that. DRM. Blah, blah. And people people flipped out. They're like, DRM was, like, this big thing. Oh, I can't go to my friend's house and play the game. They backed up on everything that everyone was pissed off about. They recreated the console, whatever. They PS4 released is Xbox exactly 360. Like that. 2.0. PS4 is exactly like that. Exactly they, what they were trying to fight against is literally what yeah, a PS4 they, they is. They had to change it to just mimic the PS4. But no, but what I'm name. saying is like, you can't, like I can't come to your house and put a game into your console and just play it. There's like at least a 10 minute wall now. Yep, for the, for the game. And shit. Prior to starting this podcast, we had to update the game. That took about 20 minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like That's an update. That's, but... Th- that's the problem, like, I think with PS4, they still somehow only download uh, some of the content on the disc. They, they don't have to go through the well, whole download. Well, it's the same thing with this, like... Think about, think about it this way. How many Xbox Ones do we have here right now? We have two. Why? Because Witcher 3 was not downloaded on Dylan's console, and I had yep. to bring mine to play it. Because yep. we didn't want to wait the half an hour. To yeah, to start. Time. So... Xbox. Yeah, that was a really good example. But but it's it's like that on everything and that was like a major thing I hated about the PS3 from the get-go. I sold I in fact bought the PS3 and sold it because the Xbox 360 didn't make me wait to play a game. Like I'm not down to like pick up a game and I'm like, "Oh yeah, I'm all jazzed to play Call of Duty." Put in the disc and there's like a fucking 50 minute update. Yeah. I'm like, okay, uh, yeah. I'm the way uh, Xbox kind going. of like tried to help. They let you do it in the background, but no, not but all also, of work. But also, if you're planning on buy, buying digital copy or digital yeah, game, yeah. you can download it 24 hours before the game yep. releases. It's locked until like, let's say yeah. midnight of yeah. the day. So at least you'll have it ready at that I time. I have major so qualms that's nice. with that though But here's well. the thing, like a lot of people are... Like us, we like the physical copies because yep. we can resell that. Yeah. Trade it in. Once you're done. Once you're done with uh, with me single player, like I traded in Shadows Mortar, a great game. I loved it. I got what I needed from it. I p- finished the story. Yeah. I got what I needed from it, and I I traded it because I was like, I'm done with it. I'm gonna move on. I don't need the DLC. I don't have to spend more money. I'm gonna get some of the money back that yeah. I yeah right. Give some money and then and sell like, it for relating th- sell to a lot three. of that like. So the way that they have it set up is such that, okay, install the game for 10 minutes, and then it's like, okay, you're ready to play. Okay, installs are Two major problems with that. Two major problems with that is, yes, a lot of games do say ready to play after 10 minutes. But you can't play online. I should really say three three major problems. One, you can play like a demoed version of the game until the game is at 100%, uh, such as Wolfenstein. I think I tried to install that game like 15 times. That's a problem of its own. Oh, that's but probably when, something that... when it did allow me to play it, and it was installing, it wasn't just me, it was like everyone. But uh, when it was installing, it let me play literally the first level, and then it said, wait for the rest of the disc to install. Yeah. I was just like, okay, this is pointless. I'm just going to let it install overnight and then come back. Or, for example, I'll install the entire game. The entire game is what I'm talking about installing. And I'll come in, and then there'll be an update, and it's like you can no longer play what you've installed because you can. You can go offline; it goes offline. Yeah, but then you're not installing but you're not an update. Updating. Right, right. Pointless. Which yeah. is yeah. The piece of purpose. Yeah. And like even if you set your games to update automatically, like I do, and my Xbox is is on never turn off, 
It's on instant on. It's right? on. It's on instant so on. It, so it's always on. So that's why that. As well as update in the background. Too bad it doesn't let you update um, games that you've already downloaded. Like yeah. have their updates automatically gone through. It only does like some software them, updates. For some the of them do software. do it automatically, but a lot of them will not. And I don't understand what the difference is. I think it's developer related. Like they obviously control the updates. Microsoft's not really watching that. Yeah, they're just the servers push it through the yeah. servers. And, and like, I think that's what the major problem is, is because there's that thing there, like the company's like, oh, let's make sure they're not uh, ripping off a copy of the game. Right. So they're like, okay, guy's, let's, let's make them- That put guy's the, puking over Let's his make them bleh. put the disc in before it updates. And I'm just like, ugh, crazy. I know. The wait times have gotten ridiculous. Yeah. Just download a packet of the game so that they can say like you own the game yep. and be, permanently. be done with it. Permanently. There should be a packet of the game- Oh my God. That's like, okay. This is his CD key. So like Steam. So that permanently I have it like, like they were going to do. Right? Xbox was going to do <laughs> what Steam was doing for but like PC. now with this outrage, it's like 50 times worse. Like they were going to give us the future. And now, and it's now like we're forced to fucking just a shiny version of the same shit. VCR version of the 360. <laughs> Now it looks you, good. I have no problem. I, so, I like it. So this, it. just to just to push this in there, this is actually one of the reasons why they even bother getting any of right. the next gen. Consoles. You're gonna. Wait. This is why I'm still. On just the wait till it's cheaper. Sixty. Just wait till it's cheaper. I am waiting until it's gonna be two hundred bucks. That's hey, what I'm waiting for. Special till. effects. <laughs> what? <laughs> she's appeared. That's all. <laughs> Boom! She's a she's a witch. Yeah. She uses she's her magic. Swiss. She's got the. The, the, the giant yeah and, and the thing like, is like, smoke. a everything comes out for the 360 yeah. like until like recently everything yeah. has come out for it oh which no which uh I, I thought about earlier they're actually bringing out Mortal, Mortal Kombat X for PS3 yep yeah well that's yeah I didn't even know that I heard, I heard it uh earlier in the week and at this point like the moment I heard that I was just like uh yup so uh Perfect. I don't <laughs> even need a next gen console. All right. I'd like to talk about two things quick fire right now. Two things I'm very excited about. Shadows of Mordor. First of all, I'm just going to preface this. I liked Just Cause 2 a lot. I've played over 80 hours of that game and 100%ed it. And I love Congratulations. Shadows of Mordor. That's another achievement. <laughs> I've also 100%ed that game <laughs> and all the DLC and whatever. Those two games are amazing. I have to first and foremost say that. And I'm very excited for what the developers have planned for the future. Uh, Mad Sorry, Max. Sorry, I was just going to say, yeah, for Mor sure. Mortal Kombat X, PS3, Xbox 360 versions delayed again, apparently, two days ago cool. on uh, GameSpot and IGN, I think. Whether they're delayed or not. Yeah, but they're coming, coming out. They're coming out, out yeah. which yeah. is good. Sorry, continue. Yeah, no problem. problem. Mad Max, the game's coming out. I was not excited for it because I thought it was going to be a movie game, but yeah. the movie's already out. I was going to say, um, they've... Divert. Nah, I don't know if they diverted it, but they made the game interesting enough that it's uh, like Shadows of Mordor gameplay. Where it has nothing to do with it's the, the same, movie. It's the same production. It's, Double, it's yeah. Warner Bros, right? Yeah. It's the same company. That's what yeah. I was about to say. That's why I mentioned that yeah. I really like it. Wasn't it first by someone else and then moved to Warner Bros? No. Or did, was it Warner Bros and then it moved? Because what I know is it there was that. a game that, can, that got cancelled. It might be that. Because... When I saw the trailer, it was the exact same people that made Shadows of Mortar, as well as the narrator for Shadows of yeah. Mortar that was talking about. Was, he did the voiceover for that as well. For uh, yeah. Hey, let's all just take a moment and look I'm, at Gerald Player. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, Dingus. I might have to censor that. I don't see anything. <laughs> Not do I. The Witcher has been circumcised <laughs> completely. Um, is it hey, mono? Ladies, don't go away. Is it monolith? Yeah. In conjunction with uh, Warner Bros. that are... Yeah, and Monolith produced. is what did Shadows of Mordor. That's what, yeah, and that's, Mad Max is also the same too. Yeah, companies. okay. So yeah, that's what I thought. I'm, Anyways, I'm, I'm really excited it. for Mad Max because yeah. it's not a movie game, as well as it's the same company. It's based so I'm sure on, yeah, it's based on the movie just, that has come in out. In the same based. way that Shadows of Mordor is based on Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Has nothing to do oh, with the movies. Oh, the developer's avalanche for... Same um, thing. As Monolith? Yeah. No, I mean, like, it's the same as Shadows of Mortar. Like, the same setup. Publisher, production house. But, um, the developer for Shadows of Mortar was Monolith. Whereas mm, this no, is No, it was Avalanche. Silver something, if you grab my thing. Oh. I, have, I have my copy of the game right there, if you want to check it out. Get talking. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited for that, as well as Just Cause 3. I, I fucking love number 2, and the fact that they're adding co-op to number 3 just makes it that much better for me. So, I can't wait. It's, it is Monolith. Yeah. 
That's what I said. Monolith. And then check the other company. Warner Bros. And there's not like a software developer or something? Uh, no. Avalanche isn't written there anywhere? All right, yeah. That's fine. So, but it is Warner Bros. working with another developer. Yeah. Guy. So, but... I think they're working with Miller as well on the game. George Miller? Yeah. He's well, I think or, like they producer. talked like they, they were like he okay this is with the game. The, the the producers of the movie were like this is what our movie's going to be make sure the game is somewhat like it where it's just apparently I think I, I think it was Funhouse that said uh, the Mad Max game will be 60% mm. driving 40% like walking. Yeah. Choices choices. Which pretty much I'm just going to take them all. Hey. Is he going to get mad? No. Hey. I think I did that in mine as well. All right, get dressed. Um, yeah, the point is, I think Mad Max safe bet that it'll turn out pretty well. I'm, I'm not totally I'm convinced. Excited. I'm not totally convinced yet. If it's like Shadows of Mordor, sure. I'm. I at will launch, if, buy it if it comes out on the 360. <laughs> <laughs> what if uh, the Xbox One? You can find one for two hundred dollars. Buy. Then the I'll fall. I'll get it and I'll get Mad Max. Like I want to get Mad Max. Mad the Max. The movie was me, amazing. For We're, me, that movie. Yeah. From recent launch, uh, from re- uh, recent releases of yeah. movies, it has been the best movie, and because it had no love scenes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow, no sex drive. Um, Shots fired. We're we're cl- we're closing in on the end of our podcast, uh, but we can spend like a couple minutes talking about just movies recently that we've watched. And you brought up like recent releases. I'm gonna say I think my top three of 2015. Off the top of my head are Mad Max, for sure. Avengers, Ultron, Age of Ultron, and Kingsman: The Secret Service. Kingsman, yeah. amazing comedy and action spy movie. Like they played on that genre so well, and it was just such. It was fun throughout. They adapted the. They adapted the comic really well. Oh, because it was a comic, yeah. right? Did you read it or? I didn't read it. I just I read about it. That they 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 said they was faithful. Really, yeah, that's good. Uh, the that's... only thing is the the girl with the knife feet. Yeah. Uh, was a was a guy in the uh, thing. So well, they, they have to make that. it a little more yeah, sexy. Yeah, but there was a few things that they switched. It worked. But it, it worked. worked so well. Um, For me, uh, it would have to be Mad Max, Kingsman, and. I would have to say Avengers as well. Totally. Totally. Right. Because yeah, it's so fun. It's fun. It was a fun yeah. movie to watch. Yeah. I, I don't... I like the first I don't one get, better, though. But I don't get... 2015, yeah. I like... Or no. Actually, I might have to switch out uh, Avengers with um, Ex Machina. You like that? I, I, really I, liked, I that. liked it. But it, was, it wasn't what I expected. Ex, I, I had no expectations. It's, it, it was a smaller movie. Actually, oh, okay. Once again, heard it from Funhouse. They're like, go watch it because... I, don't was, know, I forgot who was, was James or Lawrence was saying it. Or they, they were saying, you know, go watch it. Like, support smaller, like, I think it was an yeah. indie, indie movie, pretty much. Yeah. And uh, Oscar Isaac's in it. He's going to be in the upcoming Star Wars film. Um, I, had, I had no idea. I, I didn't see any trailers prior to watching it. And I was like, it's interesting. It was, it, it addressed some really interesting questions for our yeah. future, humanity's future. In yeah, I really, to I really like that kind of evolving. sci-fi. Yeah. I, I, Is it based off Deus Ex? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, it's uh, that's what that's about. It's about a guy who creates artificial intelligence. Art- artificial. artificial, artificial. Yeah, sometimes my enunciation goes <laughs> AI. astray. <laughs> he invented AI Go that on. was so lifelike that uh, the the. I, the main character, he gets confused on whether or not pretty much fell in love. Fell in fell love, love with it. With, he doesn't. He gets like, confused about his, whether he can love something like this or not. Yeah. And then the the the, the AI. Don't spoilers. Like, Don't no spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> and you just see like how the other movies though how it plays out. No, but this is to this me is, that sounds like iRobot. Her honestly, I thought it was like her. I thought I think it was her with. A physical body attached. So yeah, have you ever got have you but guys I don't know ever how watched the, Steven I, Spielberg's artificial intelligence? I don't I don't think so. That's an amazing movie. I'm sure um, it's similar. with Jude Law and he's a sex yeah. robot and it literally sex robot. And it also has that little kid that's in signs and you know I yeah. see dead I see dead people. Is it the same kid? Sorry, not no. Is it signs? That, that, Sixth that, Sense, Sixth Sense. It's not that signs. Kid? It's that kid? It's that kid, yeah. I see dead people. Uh I see something sexy Atkins or Olsen? I don't remember. I don't know. Um 
But he's for me, I, I, I wouldn't put that he's in my... He's an ugly adult, that's all I'll say. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it in my <laughs> top three just because it wasn't... I, I'm basing it on know. entertainment, and I was so entertained by... I was just the oh, act, I, action. Well, I, Mad Max was I like those kinds enthralling. Of yeah. Very little story. Great amount of action. Works. Avengers. Um, I'm not... I haven't read the comics, so I'm not going to base like... Oh, it wasn't the Ultron was not was not true to the comics. I I don't know what Ultron was in the comics. I agree. I liked Ultron was not true to the comics. I was like I liked how he was on the screen, so yeah, it worked for me. That's why it's a, in my own opinion. Same with uh, Kingsman. I just I loved everything about that movie. Yeah, the movie was fun. The All same right. way Avengers, the first one, was fun. That's how Kingsman was for me. It was, yeah. a, it was a comic book adaptation yeah. that was made right. to be fun. I think... Um, I'm going to say for my top three... This uh, year? In that order, in going for number one and number three, Avengers 2. I can't figure out how to get through these door guys. Uh, oh, there's another one guy, but I'm not going to bother with him. We're almost done. Yeah, Go so on. Avengers 2, number one, for sure. Uh, just all the things they could have done wrong, and all the things that they could have... Like, all the elements that they were working with, it was just a perfect amalgamation of what the movie should have been. And I think that was incredible. Um, and then number two has to be Kingsman. That was incredible. That, and that yeah. movie completely caught me off guard. Right. I didn't know that it was going to be... And it was delayed. I remember movie. it was delayed. Yeah. So they, they I didn't touched know. it up. That was they amazing. I thought it was going to be, like, kid James Bond. And it was just, like, yeah. amazing. No. It was its own thing. Yeah. And then number three for me has to be... Uh, and they're doing a sequel for Kingsman. Good. Thank you. Are they? Yeah. It's cool. And uh, number three for me has to be uh, Fast and Furious. Furious oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Furious 7. Just because it was, it was a good you like that series, iteration. Right? I really like that series, yeah. I've only watched seven. It's definitely I think one of my top tens, but... Oh, how, top how, many, have you, how many movies have you seen this year? Top ten? To make it into the top ten. Probably seen maybe I 15 seen in total. I, yeah, so I there's think some interchangeable movies, yeah. I, I want to think of other really movies bad. that I've watched this year. Pitch Perfect 2. I have not seen that. <laughs> it went with the girl. Went with Bay. What are you looking Anna forward Kendrick to Ooh. in movies this year? Uh, Jurassic World, Terminator. Mm. Oh, there's some really good movies coming out this yeah. year. Uh, Star Wars. As well as, I don't know if you guys have there's seen There's a lot of like established franchises. I was yeah. just about established to say. Established franchises, but... It's different with movies for me. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It seems different. For me, it's the same. You like the story so much, you want a continuation. No, I feel like for me, I'm not. I'm not locked into continuing with a movie. Like, if I'm, thank Christ, finally found the fucking door. Um, for me, like, for if a movie's shit and I've heard that it's shit, I'm not gonna bother watch it no matter what. Like Tokyo Drift, I didn't watch it in theaters. I waited until it came out on DVD and I rented it with a bunch of friends, so that the cost was like minimal. Um, oh what? <laughs> we do not condone. We do. We do condone. We, we do, do not condone or support that. We but condone. Seeing as I live in Canada, YOLO. Um, we we do. Condone. True North, strong and illegally free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gray area free. Gray area. Um, but yeah, like I mean, for for that kind of stuff, like if a movie shit, like I don't really care. Whereas like a game, no one can really tell me how I'm gonna feel about a game. You know. Like, the same can be said about a movie, but I feel like I can look at IMDb, I can look at Rotten Tomatoes, and be like, okay, I don't care for this. This isn't a movie that I think is going to appeal to me. I can wait until it's accessible and watch it then. For a game, someone's going to tell me that The Witcher 3 is a 10 out of 10, or someone that's going to tell me a Witcher 3 is 3 out of 10. I'm going to have to play the game and make the decision for my own. What people take away from games is completely different. Like, yeah, like earlier how completely I was saying different. that some people actually base the game on graphics. Yeah. And then that 10 out of 10 is like, oh, these it's graphics are amazing. It's weighed out but of the, all those things. The, and that's not even relevant sucks. to me. Yeah. As long as the graphics are at least a 7, for me, graf- uh, for me, like it doesn't matter at all. Yeah. Yeah. Like even uh, uh, for me, I'm going back to play Wind Waker on my GameCube. That game is still great. And as you can see, clearly the graphics wouldn't be on standard (laughs) as what it is now. But the game is pristine and it's good. And that's what makes a game good. For me at least. 
Yeah. In um, conclusion, in conclusion, to, to, to your giant three. essay, yeah. <laughs> my three points, my arguments, and my thesis, and what. What makes a good game? A good game is made by a lot of things, but in summation, in summation. a good game can be said to be made out of. <laughs> For me, a good game is replayability. Yeah. I I need to be able to get what I whatever it is that I believe sixty dollars or eighty dollars nowadays, fuckers. Um, yes, and, in the fall, it's our Star Wars Battlefront and Mad Max, it's Call of Duty Black Ops Three, so sixty nine and seventy nine for the standard, the standard release. Yeah, and as well damn as damn Canadian dollar, which probably means that I'm probably as well as with tax like a hundred bucks. What? And with tax like a hundred bucks. Uh, like I'm wondering how uh, game uh, kids even bucks. afford to like game anymore. Like I know that kids aren't purchasing their own games, but when I was younger, like I purchased my own games. I didn't wait for my parents to buy me anything technically um back in the 90s and whatnot like games were 80 90 bucks for like, uh you can't reason that for me that's not even the same thing gaming is now an accessible hobby it's not this like crazy niche well, before thing before that then does technically before then you had the arcades it was it's a different kind of accessible hobby it went from. But well, that's what I'm saying. I wasn't going. I wasn't going to an arcade and putting down ninety dollars at the time. I also don't think our area of living was suitable. Like you hear arcades like that were booming, or like in California and stuff. I can't think of somewhere that was unless you go to Palladium no, in Mississauga. But I mean, like, but even above and beyond that, like when gaming became a personal hand, like thing that I brought into my house, games were not eighty dollars. They absolutely were not. For the Super Nintendo and stuff like that, they were like 50 bucks. I remember, Kate, okay, just speaking about the Xbox, because I, I can remember these numbers with hard fact. The Xbox, the original Xbox, $50 for a brand new game. The 360, up by 5 bucks at first, 55 Upped it by another 5 60 Then by the end, 65 to 70 depending on the game. Then for the Xbox One, game started at 69 if you were lucky, some were still fifty nine, and uh, yeah, it, sh- it keeps going up from that. Like now, a game is like what seventy bucks starting, and I guarantee you by the end yeah. we'll be looking at ninety before tax, mind you. So I don't know. I, I just feel and like, to think- I often wonder, like, because I bought all of my Xbox or three sixty games by myself. How are kids going to be able to do that? Here's the one I just thought of this, and it might start be one a Kickstarter. Of- <laughs> Kickstarter, let me buy this game. I'll- yeah. Do whatever. I'll do a let's play for you guys. <laughs> right? Um, it, it just occurred to me, like, back when Xbox did their whole E3 conference saying, like, we want to be like Steam. Here's the thing. PC games are usually cheaper, especially with Steam. There's a lot of discounts. I don't know if Microsoft or Xbox or how it would work with stores if they would have dropped the price of console games. So if they were going to go with the Steam model in one use for one disc... Or, or whatever, because it's like a, a key, right? You can't really sell those, right? Yeah, this is one. You can actually uh, bet or gam- gamble to play the card game. I don't think you'd be able to really have... Like, you wouldn't be able to sell your game back. Like, you, you're stuck with it at the full price. I don't think they would have worked it out within stores. Because then it's like PS4, $69.99, Xbox, and PC, forty nine thirty nine or whatever it was. I don't think that would have worked out. I think they would have kept it at the same price, which is why I'm happy at least the way it worked out is you could still sell your game. Say you buy your game at $69.99, like I did with Shadows of Mordor, Mordor, and then I was able to sell it back for 30 bucks. Then I'm looking at a thir- like 40 bucks for the story that I played and, and yeah. really enjoyed. So I'm happy about that at least. Uh, which you can also even go on on websites like Kijiji and sell it to someone else. Yeah, and yeah. buy buy games. And you can even get that one hundred percent profit from which EB Games is trying yeah. to get. You can get it yourself. Yeah. Which then you're making back even more of your sixty, seventy, eighty dollars. See, as a physical collector and gamer, I like owning something. At the end of the day, I like having something to show for. Like, I don't want to, like, pull up a, a screenshot and be like, this is $900 to me. I want to be able to be like, stack of games. Like, this is $1,000. Like, I, I want to be able to see something. Whether or not that something is actually worth anything to anyone is irrelevant. But I can resell it. And that's the key, is that I can resell it. Right. In the future, whatever. I can still plug in my Sega Genesis and play those games. 
I don't know if I'll be able to do that with my Xbox One. Yeah. And that's something that kind of annoys me. Yeah. But that being said, likewise to what you guys were saying with Steam sales and whatever else, anytime there is a digital deal or a games with gold or a deal with gold, I look at them every single time. Because if it is a game that I would not necessarily have purchased, but maybe I had a thought about it, if it's at the right price, I'll buy it. And I've done that a couple of times. I bought Sniper Elite V3 um, with game, games with, not games with gold, but deals with gold because mm-hmm. it was cheap enough. And I bought uh, Laura Croft uh, Definitive Edition, another stupid HD collection. But I got it for a cheap price, so I don't really care. Okay, yeah. And there are two games I may not have necessarily purchased ever. Not at full ticket price, definitely. Jeez, this guy has a strong... It's freaking 10. Um, but yeah, I, I may not have ever purchased it. But besides the point, I I think like at least the value was there. It was worth purchasing. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I feel like, once again, relating back to E3, like everyone was so against like DRM. But that's what Microsoft was trying to give people. Yeah. They were trying to give them a, a deals with gold. If they could cut out the retailer, then there's more of a portion that they can work with out of that $60 to say, okay, we can drop this by 10 and be like, okay... Uh, download the game without the disc, fifty bucks. Uh, buy the game in store, sixty bucks. Because they have to pay the retailer. Retailer needs to get paid. It's yeah. just s- simple business. But I don't know. People were against that and whatever. And we've still gone digital. I mean, I can't put it in the game and play it offline. I really, really can't. Right. So. Unless you plug in your old console. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like next gen. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm very. I don't know who to not use. not saddened per se, but like I'm very disappointed with the way that. I like, wish it worked the, out better. Yeah, I don't know the, the way the gaming is headed. It's just very downhill, and like I see it happening so very quickly, and I I, I know I'm not alone. That definitely can't be the case, but um, I think like people just don't care because it's coming at us slowly. But the thing is, it just keeps coming. There's just a lot of bad trends that are persisting through six gaming. And six. I think I might forfeit this round. That's on fine. purpose, so I get all these. Get rid did of you guy. win the first one? Or did yeah, you I did. I, I, okay. I won it. So yeah, then this guy it. is like yeah, not affected by any way. special cards or ability. Like, oh, uh, just get him into the graveyard. Do it up. I only lose a level two. Get it just into a... the graveyard. <laughs> to the shadow, banished to the shadow realm. <laughs> Hopefully, he's dumb enough to play a seven. Oh, he looked at my cards. Let's see what happens. All right, he's gonna start this round. Oh, he's got one more card than me. Oh. Yeah, anyways, but I would have to say that, like... Oh, Dylan, what are movies that you are looking... For? What's the looking one forward movie to? that you're looking forward to this year? Star Wars! The one movie I'm looking forward to. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't yet. know, that's a hard question. Is uh, Dawn of Justice coming out next year? That's going to be pretty good. Like, I wasn't excited about that initially. Is Suicide Squad also next year? Yes. Oh, okay, I've seen cool. some of that being shot downtown, so that's pretty cool. Yep. Uh, Why did I use Impenetrable Fog now? What, what um, yeah. Marvel movies are coming out this year? Ant Man. Ant Man. Not very excited for that. Fantastic Four is also this year, right? Yeah. 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 With Fox, though. Do you mm. think that's it? I don't know. I would say. Off the top of my head. Off the top of my head, Terminator Genesis has to be like the top of my list. But after that, uh, John Wick Two is supposed to come out at some point. I don't think it'll be this year. Not this year. But, oh, but that's, that's going to be really, really to. good. As soon as I heard that it was coming out, I was like, okay. GG. I can't. There's wait. my money. I, I fucking love. I, I love Keanu Reeves. Like, he's just such a nice guy as well. Such a top notch actor. Yeah. Top notch. Top notch. Jolly good. Um. But yeah. So yeah. Uh. John Wick too. Oh no. And uh, other than that, I would say Jurassic Park. All right. Yeah. Terminator though is gonna be amazing. I uh, I'm very excited for the cast that they've announced so far is is really good. Amelia Clark. Yeah. Amelia Clark. Annie. Annie. Then as Stoneball uh, Targaryen, oh, I'm f- I for lost. me it would have to be, um, what's his name, James Bond Spectre. Oh, I'm not excited for I'm, that at all. I'm super excited for that. I love <laughs> James Bond. I love Even, James Bond as well. I really don't like Daniel Craig. You don't? I, I really like Daniel don't. Craig. I, I really, like really Daniel don't. Craig. For me, he's not as bad. I know a lot of people give him hate. And Damn. A lot of people I don't think a lot spe- of people do give they him hate. There's enough. Mission they Impossible do. 5 coming out. Do you, were you guys just talking about Spectre? I just yeah. tuned yeah. out. Okay. Uh, 
but yeah, there's there's that. Other than that, for me, uh, I'm, I'm not stupid. super excited for uh, Star Wars. I'm not super excited. Yeah, I'm not super excited for Star I'm Wars not. either. Wow. I'm just trying not to hype myself up because I know like if we start getting into it, then it's like, oh yeah, and then we'll just dis- be disappointed. Just you know, like the prequels. Exactly. Just like the prequels. <laughs> just like the prequels. Uh, Magic <laughs> Mike XXL. Oh, yeah. You ready? Is your body ready? I already feel it in my pants. Uh, and I'm also, I'm also not excited for Jurassic Park. Jurassic World? I, yeah. I'm i not excited based off what I've seen but so far. But the park far, is opening. But it looks Yo, good. Chris Pratt, though. But it looks really good. Chris so Pratt's my... I'm excited uh, from that standpoint. My boy. Fantastic Four, I could care less. Yeah. The new Hitman movie I'm pretty excited for. Uh, Agent 47. The first one was... He's supposed to be a, like, undercut, like, yeah. quiet and stuff. And he's yeah. like goes into, the, to, into jail and blows up the sniper and, like... It's not, it doesn't feel like Hitman anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, like, the original, I I think a lot of people hated it. I didn't really mind it. Yeah. I, I kind of liked that uh, Timothy Oliphant Hitman movie. It was pretty good. And it was also, uh, I, I don't think the publishing houses really minded it because um, the same actors, like the lady, and Tim, Timothy Oliphant, first of all, is a pretty big actor right now. But that girl ended up being in James Bond. She was the Bond girl, so... Clearly, it worked out for everyone. Awesome. Spectre, like I said, like I, I just don't like Daniel Craig, so I don't think I'll even watch it. Uh, Quantum of Solace kind of sucked. Um, I, I Casino Royale Skyfall. was okay. Skyfall was Skyfall, great. Skyfall, I didn't even bother watching until like a year and a half Skyfall later. Skyfall was great, and in I my opinion. care for it. Okay. You guys interested in Mockingjay Part 2? I'm not. I, I am a fan of the Hunger Games trilogy. I, I didn't like Part 1 because it was... Me either. Like, it was a movie just used to set up the second part, so gain more money. Yeah. Yep. They should just. Keep I was it just the gonna same. say. <laughs> Sometimes it works. Deathly Hollows had enough content. Yep. Breaking Dawn no. Part One. I'm. I'm gonna say it right no. now. I watched the whole Twilight series. Harry Potter did not. No, have it didn't. Enough but content in that's the okay. First one to merit two movies. It was. It was definitely think, something that started that that pattern. I that hate was it for that. Definitely where it started. But well, was hundred percent where it started. I, I hate it for it that. Worked. But it worked. It did work. It worked. Sebastian's right. It built enough intrigue. It's, and it cut off. It's at a one of the most respectable movies. That happened. Movies. Part One. Other than Godfather. Yeah, right. Recent, <laughs> like for a wider audience, like yeah, Harry yeah, Potter's yeah. for everyone. Um, but like, yeah, like you said, followed by Twilight doing Breaking Dawn Part One and Two, um, Mo- Hunger Games Mocking now. And Any then, anything even that's going to divergent, happen. I think divergent doing it too. No, I think they're keeping it to th- to just the three. Um, but I, I could be wrong. You anything they're going right. to announce they, Part One and Two. Anything nowadays <laughs> that's geared for this kind of audience, they know they can. If they it. have tweens, yeah. they can do. Yeah, it. They, they can, can swing yeah. it. Sure. So, I'm excited for it just because I'm a fan of the Hunger Games, um, and it'll be better than the first part because this one actually has action and will finish off the story. And to answer Chris's question, he's got it four. So it's Divergent, Insurgent, and then Part One and Part Two. Of what's the last one called? I'm looking it up right now. Uh, Insurgent, and then Allegiant Part One and Allegiant Part Two. Yeah. Awesome. All right, I think we are done for today. Yeah. That was great, guys. Thank you so much for tuning Thanks in. Thanks for and tuning in. Um, I think. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> our, 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 I think we'll uh, start off our next one with. Uh, it's going to be the week before E3, so I guess we'll do E3 predictions, what Sounds we're good. looking forward to, what we hope will happen. Fallout 4. Fallout 4. <laughs> Fallout 4. Okay. Just Cause 3. Just, yeah. well, just Cause 3 is announced. I know, but we'll I sh- want more gameplay. Yeah, Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> you already we'll, we'll ta- want the we'll, <laughs> I already want the <laughs> We'll talk about that when, back, when it happens. Bring back demo CDs. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> this is Away From Gaming, podcast number one, and we are finished.